Yes. Hi, um, I'm Jason. So I'm excited to tell you a little bit about the story we're working on in my lab. So um, uh, I'm going to tell you a story about cataracts. So cataracts are a protein aggregation in the lens of the eye. So the lens is a, in the front of your eye, and it's got two major jobs. It needs to be totally transparent so that light can come through the lens and hit the back of your eye in the retina. And your lens needs to be able to have uh, the right tensile properties. It needs to be a little bit squishy um, so that the muscles on either side of your lens can allow you to see near and far. So that's called accommodation. So if I want to look in the back of the room, I need to be able to focus back there. If I want to look in the front of the room, I need to be focus up there. And that's the job of the lens to be able to change its shape like that. And so cataracts are a protein aggregation in the lens of the eye that leads to blindness. So almost everyone in here, I'm sure, has seen a dog with that cloudy appearance in the, in the lens like is shown in the picture up there. A sort of milky white appearance in the, in the eye of an older dog. So almost all dogs by age 8 and, and almost every single dog by age 13 uh, has vision impairment from cataracts. And so the problem is when you start to get protein aggregation in the lens of the eye, now that that protein aggregate is now opaque. It's not transparent anymore. So your retina can see, your brain can see, but light can't penetrate in through your lens and into the retina, so you become functionally blind. These properties of the lens, the solubility, the, the transparency, and these right tensile properties are all derived from a protein called crystalline. So crystalline allows the lens to have this fascinating property. And so over time, the crystalline protein becomes damaged. And so when the crystalline protein becomes damaged by UV irradiation or head trauma or, or chemicals or just age, the crystalline protein loses its properties and it aggregates. Right? And when that happens, you, you can no longer see. You become blind from cataracts. And so my lab's really interested in this question. And I want to I tell you the specific things that we got interested in, and specifically in this event, all right? It's because cataract surgery is when they go in and take out that, your natural lens and they put in a piece of plastic. That's the most common surgical procedure performed in the world, OK? Very, very, very common. But there's still all, almost 100 million people in the world that are blind from cataracts, OK? And so in our day-to-day -day existence here in San Francisco in the United States and in Europe, cataract might be considered a solved problem. The cataract surgery is very common. It's very safe. But it's certainly not a solved problem for the millions of people in the world that are functionally blind while I'm talking from that, from that disease. And so we wanted to look at this, right? Uh, uh, it's not a solved problem. And for God's sake, we're at UCSF, right? We don't, we're in San Francisco. We're in Silicon Valley. We don't, there's no such thing as a solved problem, right? <laughs> so you look at it. You turn it over. You push on it a little bit. And you solve it better, right? That's, that's, that's why I moved here, right? That's, I don't want to have to justify that to anyone. I want to be somewhere where that's what we do for a living. And so we decided to look at this a little closer. I'm a protein biochemist. And so um, you know, you're, you're alumni, so I'm sure you learned um, all your protein biochemistry and physical chemistry and then probably immediately threw that out. But that's a terrible choice. And, and I, I do <laughs> physical organic chemistry all the time. And when we look at the physical chemistry of this system, what we find is that the that crystalline protein that I told you about um, is in natural, soluble, healthy, transparent forms. And then it turns into this opaque form. So there's a healthy, transparent, uh, safe form of the protein, and then an opaque form of the protein that doesn't allow light to get in. So when a graduate student in my lab, Leah Makeley, and I were thinking about this problem, we thought about it as physical organic chemists. What is the problem in this system? The problem is, oh, as a function of age, this healthy protein transitions into this other form. And this form is actually a lot more stable than this form. So what if we could come up with a topical treatment for cataract? The that would go into India and China and other places where you could deliver an eyedropper uh, formulation of a small molecule instead of doing a surgical procedure. 
and be able to treat those individuals that are blind right now. And so Leah and I, Leah is very smart, way smarter than me, and so we sat and we drew this up on a whiteboard many, many times and thought about free energies and thermodynamics and all the things that, that you probably forgot about. But that's strictly, strictly what we thought about for this problem. And what we decided, what if we could get a molecule that would stabilize the healthy transparent form of this protein, would we be able to run this in reverse, sort of reverse the aging process and get something that is back to healthy. I'll spare a lot of the details, but we screened through about 18,000 molecules using a new um, high throughput screening modality that we developed in the lab that I'm happy to talk to you more about if you're interested. And the idea was we, we, we started with the cataract, we treated with small molecules, and then we looked for molecules that would take the cataract and put it back into the healthy form. Now, we're interested in this as a quick sidebar. We're interested in this for a lot of different reasons. And again, I'd be happy to talk to you about this later. It turns out that this opaque form, that milky white thing that you see in the eye of a dog, the, at the protein structural level, that's nearly identical to the type of protein aggregates that you see in Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease and Huntington's disease in the central nervous system. So we're really trying to build hammers against this nail, and we're using cataracts as our, as our proof of concept. And so we ran this screen, and we found molecules that stabilize this healthy transparent form. And sure enough, when we took mouse that becomes completely blind, right? That mouse is completely blind. We treated its right eye with this small molecule in a topical formulation. The first ones we did, we just went to the local pharmacy and bought some you know, saline eye drops and poured everything out, put our molecule into the eyedropper, and then, because we, we weren't very sophisticated, we're chemists. So um, <laughs> we, found, we found that two weeks of treatment, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we put a single drop on the right eye with this small molecule that we found, and it would penetrate into the lens and reverse the process. And hopefully a lot of you can see on the top here is what a cataract looks like. And so this is a, a, a slip, light, slit lamp. When you go to the optometrist and they shine a light in your eye and you think they're just being mean to you, what they're, what they're doing is they're looking for backscatter of light off your lens. And they grade you for cataract. And so on the top here is what an optometrist would call a grade three cataract. So that would be a, a person, if it was a person, they don't do surgeries on mice. Um, there was a, if it was a, a person, that you would have cataract replacement surgery. But same exact mouse on the right eye, we saw a really nice reversal of the cataract. And so now we've started a company on this, because it's Silicon Valley and UCSF. Uh, we've started a company on this. I think it's a law, but I'm not positive. <laughs> And we started, uh, Leah Makeley is my student, has moved in. She's the, the president and CEO of that company. And together as a team, we're raising resources and trying to develop this, both to treat dogs, cats, and these individuals in the world who are blind from cataracts, which drives me nuts that that's considered a solved problem. Because I know that you know, we have to try to help these people too, OK? So that's my story for today. Um, thank you very much for listening. I'm I'll be sticking around to be happy to answer any questions afterwards. Thank you.